I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is for my professional responsibility class. Here I'm continuing our lecture series on uh, Model Rule 1.7, which is about conflicts of interest. And here we're going to be talking about a comment 13, which um, deals with 1.7b and conflicts that arise when someone else besides the client himself or herself is paying the lawyer's fees. So let's dive in here. This will be a short um, kind of overview of this issue. So a lawyer can be paid from a source other than the client. The most common situation is an insurance company hires someone to represent their policyholder, um, but or an employer hires someone to represent their employee. Parents with adult children, like college age kids, well, um, if, they, if their grown child has legal problems, a lot of times the parents will pay for their lawyer and so forth. So we're going to have a standalone rule about this in 1.8F, but even if your state doesn't have that rule, it also comes under 1.7B according to comment 13. So you can be paid from the, an, a third party source um, it could also be a co-client, right? Um, but if, as long as the client is informed of that fact and consents the arrangement um, and the arrangement doesn't compromise the lawyer's duty of loyalty or independent uh, judgment to the client. And so that's a lot of assumptions there. So I'll give an example. Let's say you have two friends that are uh, injured in a car accident one of them can easily afford a lawyer, so they hire the lawyer, or they're being sued together for a, a car accident, and they say, tell their friend who was with them, don't worry, my lawyer will uh, cover both of us. The friend has to give informed consent uh, to this arrangement, and the lawyer has to be um, confident that it won't affect the lawyer's um, a, a judgment, for example, that the person paying can't control what the lawyer does for that client. So let's um, go back and look at, there's a little bit more about this in comment 13. Basically, the, you should ask yourself, is there a significant risk that the lawyer's representation of the client will be materially limited? So just to review, under 1.7, there's two types of conflicts of interest for current clients. There's directly adverse client, um, uh, conflicts and material limitation conflicts. And here we're really mostly talking about the second type, material limitation. Sometimes having another person who's paying the lawyer, they expect to make demands. I'll give a, a very common example. The, the person paying for it often wants to settle before trial and can pressure the lawyer to pressure the client to accept a plea deal or um, a settlement agreement or something like that. Or maybe they don't wanna hire experts or pay for experts and so forth because they wanna keep costs down because they're the ones paying for it. So, and also the client has to give informed consent, which means the client has adequate information about the material risks of the representation in this situation. And so, uh, for example, you can't have an anonymous donor that uh, um, will be funding the litigation for someone. The person who is being represented by the lawyer has to know who's paying for it and consent to the arrangement. And that concludes our short lecture about 1.7, comment 13, a third party paying for the lawyer's services.